Hello my friends of Catari Labs, my name is Saul Montoya, please welcome to this tutorial where we are going to model LAN evolution with Python and LAN Lab, okay? So, and this is for, um, this exercise is at basic scale. So, what we are going to do first, uh, you need an environment that has some geospatial tools because LAN Lab requires Rasterio and GDAL, okay? Uh, however, uh, this um, this package. I mean, if you have the geospatial, there is a tutorial for the geospatial environment. And once you have the geospatial environment installed, for example, here in Anaconda Prom, CSA Conda Conda and list. So the geospatial environment is this one, the GeoGeotary Labs that come from the tutorial. So you say. You first you go you place the zipped folder that you're going to find here on the description of the video. You're going to place that on the um, on the your document folder. So you have you will have something like say CD documents there, and then here you are going to find the unzipped folder. Okay, and see here you just place it here, and then you just type uh, Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab. Ah no. Okay. Great. First, you activate the environment. Okay. Con the activate you the Hatari Labs. Great. And then here we, what we do is that we are going to install LAN Lab. Con the install install by channel Con the forge. land lab okay because it has uh, these are kind of this complex package that has a lot of requirements that in order to assure that we use conda instead of the normal pip okay yes in my case i have it already installed okay for you it will at uh, least uh, not only LAN Lab but other packages that are required for the installation of LAN Lab, okay? And then you uh, maybe it will ask that you confirm that, and so you just press yes and okay. Okay, so once you have LAN Lab installed, you just type Jupyter Lab here, and we let's discuss uh, because this actually come from the LAN Lab um, documentation. Well, this is a version of the LAN Lab documentation. Okay, so here. You are going to find data where you are where you have a digital elevation file. You have out when you are going to create the the output. I mean the the the, the land the surface after 100,000 years. So I'm going to delete it. Delete. Okay. And then we here we are going to have the script. Okay, so let's talk about the script because it's interesting. Has uh, has some very interesting features here. Okay, this notebook illustrates the landscape evolution model according to this equation. Okay, so here. Okay, let's talk about the equation. The derivative, <laughs> the derivative of the elevation with time, is equal to a minus. Okay, so it will be always negative. Uh, Okay, again, again, again. The derivative of elevation with time is related to three factors here. First one that is related to the fluvial component. This is the hill slope component and this is the erosion, okay? The uplift or this will can be, that can be the, for example, geological uplifting, uh, ero eolic erosion, something like that. I mean, if you can measure that, that co will come here. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the the fluvial. Okay. So when a cell has a more contributing area and it has more slope, that it will have um, this this component will be higher. Okay. So this is related to the actually the 
like the um, the erosion by runoff okay however okay this one okay however this one is related to the momentum okay so the what is the momentum okay so if you have um if you have a f like an inclined i mean the let's see let's go to paint if you're okay this is how i understand this okay so if your area i mean on the cross section if this is if your area has a steep slope so actually the derivative of this will be constant but the double derivative of this will be zero okay yes okay so what does it mean that this has no momentum so actually this has no um, inertia so the sediments cannot fo won't fall okay however if you have this okay control center Okay, so if you have, for example, your land surface is like this, okay, so this is set, the derivative, the derivative will be here, zero, zero, and then here the derivative will be, uh, will increase and this will come zero as well because okay so this will be the derivative set with the rich channel okay and then the second derivative will be like this uh, that this one can be also like this okay okay yeah let's see that is like this okay this is what i understand okay so it's not easy to to explain okay and then it comes this of the second derivative that is also zero okay and then no no no, no sorry, sorry sorry yeah this has to be increasing okay and then the second derivative could be like this yes could be like this and then it could be like this as well and this will be the second derivative of x okay so what does it mean this okay so it will mean that this area will have a more a component or will have a higher rate of uh, of decrease higher rate of because this is always positive okay or negative yeah yeah well that can be negative also yeah i mean this has a lot of of theoretical background okay for example for this case this part could be um uh, uh due to the to this um variation in in eleva in elevation okay this part could have more momentum okay so you will have higher uh, rate of the of change okay because of this this is okay and this is what is is included here okay here okay whatever this is like the tectonics for example in peru we have the andes okay in peru we have the andes okay so the andes is kind of this because it's the this is two plates that are crashing each other well but it, it doesn't mean that these andes are not moving over 100,000 years so there is still some uplift you uplift rate okay that is minimal but over the over thousand years it, it happens okay so first let's okay so if the developers of land lab are actually watching this i'm really sorry this i made my best effort to to um 
to show to explain you that okay so okay so we import sys uh, well actually sys is not required we import matplotlib, numpy, rastereo, and landlab and from landlab we use the depression finder uh, the linear, this is for the diffusion, this is for the second, this ok, the stream powder eroder is for this part the linear diffusion ok, is for this part the depression finder and router is for to fix the the channel networks, ok, this is and I think, of what I have read, this is close to uh, lang to field sinks of uh, one Liu in QAS, ok, and then you have the flow accumulator, ok, that is that creates the channel network and it it creates the channel networks and the base, ok, ok, we import that, that ok and then we have our then file where we have a basin actually it's not the whole basin but it will work with the whole basin for this uh, for this example uh, I have selected a very um, a small raster because it actually requires some time I mean it requires some time to process ok so if I put a huge them it will require a lot of time and it's not the what the, I have intended in this tutorial. Okay, so here I read the array because it's only one band. Okay, and then here we have the affiliate array. This is U, and these are the parameters for the fluvial, and this is the parameter for the momentum. Okay, and then based on the raster attributes, okay, we create um we create a raster model grid that is an element of LANLAB. Okay, this is how rasters are defined on LANLAB, ok, um, like with the raster model groups it is interesting to mention that uh, LANLAB works with Voronoi meshes, ok, I haven't done so but it works with Voronoi mesh and here it has this number of row of columns and this is the raster resolution ok, we are going to run this over 100,000 years in order to see clear in order to see clear changes, ok, like visual changes, but actually if you work this over 100 years you are going to have changes, ok, and then you have to do you what you have, if you want to, to implement that on any study you have to be uh, like very careful about this, ok, this parameter because this has to be as close as physically observed or physically derived or something like that, ok, so here we just create a simulation of 100,000 years every 100 every thousand years so and then we apply the we create a like this is an empty this is an empty data set of topographic elevation however here we apply the elevations okay and on a normal uh, for example in normal array you start from this cell ok, so rows and columns, but on land lab you start from here, that's why you have to do this rearrangement ok, you initialize this and this is where you uh, analyze the fix this and then start all the flow accumulation this is the fluvial and this is the momentum ok, great and then you are going to run this over one for 100 year, 100,000 years every 1,000 years ok and finally we have the final result as you have seen this is how it will be the basing this basing ok in 100,000 years ok because yeah they will be ok and then something that is powerful about this is that you can have the uh, it can export as a SRE as kit file, ok, so you don't have to to do much ok, it will export everything as an SRE raster file, so here on a QES session we can open the mm -hmm. the 
on data we can open the la the this is the dem okay and on out these are the whole and these are really interesting uh, data sets so I strongly recommend that you do more research on that and then we have here the topographic elevation okay I'm going just to play around with the black and white because but actually you can play around with many other and then the intervals are close to the same so this is kind of comparable so you are going to see how this because this is land evolution so it has like positive rates so I mean has some places where the water where the land is below is below the original I mean is how say is uh, where the is where the elevation is lower from now and places where the elevation is higher from now as well okay so here wait Give me a sec. This is BBC 84. So. Okay, and then you can do your raster calculation. I don't know why it. It's yeah yeah because we see some deposition and erosion as well I mean not erosion because erosion is not the only we see places that are lower and then we see as well places that are higher okay so here okay right this has no mass balance okay so I actually cannot I mean the sum of what has increased in some cells needs to be what it has decreased in in other cells so and this is a great fix that you can calculate in Python or in QS okay but I leave that to you uh, well I found land lab and I think that is really interesting to for this and do a lot of stuff and strongly recommend that you can follow this tutorial and then you can play around with the land lab tutorials that they have really great stuff and play around more with the documentation my name is Montoya. welcome to uh, thank you for following this uh, follow us in our uh, youtube channels and on the coming diploma for python in water resources we are going to do a land lab up the application learn lab for a mine closure area where we are going to see how a mine site I mean an abandoned mine site will be integrated on the on a long period of time to nature okay so and the details of this coming diploma will be published as well on our social networks okay have a great day bye bye bye